Are you solutions oriented or always looking for problems with your health? This is part of a 14 part video series that explores how trauma, stress, and anxiety play a pivotal role in health recovery. Hi there, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasari. I'm a surgeon who specializes in reversing gut microbiome dysfunction and autoimmune inflammation. My technique for reversing symptoms in as little as six weeks has helped thousands of patients over the years and is called the Mind-Gut Immunity Method. And if you'd like to learn more, visit mgiclinic.com and request a discovery call. Now, many of you know my personal story. In my early 20s, I struggled with autoimmune disease and digestive dysfunction, and I was able to fix inflammation naturally using the same methods that I now use in my patients. But even after all these years, after my recovery, from autoimmune disease and digestive dysfunction, I've still struggled with the anxiety and frustration. Why was I so sick? Why did I ignore the early signs? Why did I let stress take over? And more importantly, why did I deprioritize myself in these situations? These lingering questions were important ones for me to answer because they were at the heart of why I became sick in the first place. After working with thousands of patients over the years, I can tell you that the themes of trauma, stress, and anxiety keep popping up. So in the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic, we have enlisted the help of a personal development coach to help create awareness for my clients to understand how anxiety, stress, and trauma play a pivotal role in autoimmune inflammation and digestive dysfunction. It's a mini personal development workshop, if you will, within the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic that creates awareness around illness. Our clients work one-on-one -on -one with our coach, Virginia, who you'll see here today, to integrate new awareness and thought processes into recovery. I can tell you from personally working with Virginia over the years that this is a much needed addition to the Mind Gut Immunity Academy. And from the positive feedback I've received from my patients, I know that this is something that can help others in their healing journeys. In this video, we'll be talking about how a person's focus with regards to their health problems dictate what sort of outcomes they achieve. Specifically, we'll be looking at folks that really key into solutions instead of problems. So what does, what does healthy dialogue look like? How do, you, how do you untangle the effects of trauma in everybody's lives? You know, healthy dialogue first starts with safety, making sure you're engaging with whomever you're engaging with in a safe way. And the minute that you notice that it isn't safe, you stop the dialogue until you create safety. That's one. And if you're in a situation where that's just absolutely not possible, then you have some choices that you have to make. And that could be stepping out of the situation in order to keep yourself safe. But first and foremost is that as adults, you are responsible for your own safety and your own choices. But I think we've been taught to abandon ourselves through people pleasing. And that is one of the most insidious things that I see is that people will sacrifice their own health, thought, mind, body, spirit to make someone else feel good. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, you know, it's it's one thing to know what this internal dialogue, it's not always external dialogue either. It's, it can be internal totally. dialogue as well, right? Yes. What are is there are there some ways that you that we can we can see results fast? Like what are some of the tools you use to uncover how people deal with trauma and and how and how they can integrate they, they can integrate their true selves after recovery from these sorts of, you know, from trauma, really? I mean, we're talking about self-affirmation, the types of exercises you do with these folks. I have, to, I have people create a log as well of their unhealthy dialogue and like really literally logging it so mm -hmm. that we can take a step back and look at what that dialogue is and then reframe it for them and create new dialogue because sometimes we don't even realize it's unhealthy till we put it down. So one tool that I use is creating a log, you know, for, for a couple of weeks, we kind of just log what is the unhealthy dialogue in order to reframe it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, I think that tool is probably really helpful. And you see results fast, right? This isn't something that you just keep going and going with. This is some, like you see results fast, really. I mean, light bulb moments can happen like this. And when your mindset shifts, your behavior shifts. 
So, I mean, I'm all about digging in deep, you know, quickly in order to uncover what that is so that we can move forward. And one of the beautiful things about coaching is that we're not really here to revisit the past. It's about where are we right now? How do we teach acceptance so that we can move forward? Mm -hmm. Do you think everyone has trauma? I do. Now, what the level of that trauma is, is different. But I think the minute we come out of the womb, we're being imprinted by others that's against our natural selves. So, you know, we all have our lessons to learn in this lifetime. That's my belief. So we all come in with some level. And and what what is, what's your definition of trauma? Really? You said imprinting. To me, any trauma can happen when you go against yourself. It causes trauma. If you know you don't like broccoli and someone forces you to eat it because they believe that's good for you, but you don't, that's trauma. Because you now have created a, a habit of going against what you feel is best for yourself. Yeah. And we're not talking about, you know, we're talking about tr trauma with maybe a lowercase t, right? These not yeah. necessarily like capital T trauma, you know, like... Right use, neglect, poverty, racism. Absolutely not. No. I mean, when you sell yourself out, it's a form of trauma. Yeah. On a, on a, on a micro level, but still, but still significant. It's very significant because we start to make choices from that place. And whenever you're making a choice that is not in your gut and what you know is best for you, you're betraying yourself. What happens when you continuously betray yourself? You lose confidence. What happens when you lose confidence? You get sick. Yeah, because your body sick. starts to get weak and then you get tired and now you're exhausted because you've been giving yourself away. Well, I'm going to add to that. You also justify the way you feel. Yes. It's you've now, so, you know, the trauma is so bad that you're saying sometimes, it, oh, it's okay. I'll get through this. I right. just have to push through. I just yeah. have to push through it. I don't have to take a break. I don't have to figure out what's going on. I, I, I can keep going with everything else that I'm doing, work, school, family, whatever obligation you've signed yourself up for. I can keep doing all of those things yeah. and somehow expect my condition to get better. Right. I mean, Absolutely. that's really what we're dealing. That's the only reason why I, we're all, we're interested in this trauma piece is because yeah. we see people with autoimmune disease. We see people with digestive dysfunction. It affects nearly a hundred percent of people like that in a very significant way, I would say. And, but most people have some kind of some some of these influences in their life when it's pushing them to do things I don't necessarily want to do and they really have to analyze w w what is the reason for that you know and we're not trying to demonize anyone this is about healing we all have some level of trauma whether I think it's big for me or small for you is irrelevant the point is we need to shift our perspective out of trauma into healthy dialogue so that we can heal and that's the point of it all not to downplay it really yeah, no, downplay it, upplay it. Like we healing is the key. Mind, gut, healing, and the fact that your mind does affect your healing. Yeah. I think that's that's a really important way of and that and maybe and that is the healthy dialogue, really. The that's healthy right. dialogue starts with acknowledging that, hey, I uh, there's there is there's something about the way I think or the way that I act that is not inherently part of me. And it is causing problems for me, right? So the healthy dialogue begins to unravel those sort of things. And when you're talking to yourself or talking to others, you start to identify what these things are, what these limiting beliefs are, what these assumptions are. And then you trade them in for things that are help more helpful. You know, you say, I am worthy of getting better. I am worthy of spending time on myself. Mm -hmm. It's okay for me to take a rest. It's okay for me to take some time off of work. It's okay for me to say no to that obligation. It's okay for me to restructure maybe some of my family or renegotiate some of my the obligations I already signed up for. Yeah. If, I mean, if it means getting better from, yeah, for sure. uh, you know, like digestive dysfunction or autoimmune disease. I mean, that's, that's huge, right? I mean, yeah, you, you could, tr you, you could basically get your life back for, you know, for these types of things that you're going to give up. Those limiting beliefs is the key thing that you said, because it could be as simple as that, as the limiting belief of I'm lazy if I sit down. Some people literally have that concept and they never rest because they created this belief or that belief was projected. And that's not, that's not healthy dialogue. 
That is not healthy dialogue. Is that big T trauma? No, but it is not healthy to believe a human being doesn't need rest or they have to be productive 24 hours a day. That's number one. It is not realistic to believe that we all have the same gas tank. Everybody, we are all humans, but we all are unique humans. So you have to know your own gas tank. And just because X, Y, Z over here can go at hundred miles an hour, it doesn't mean you have to too. Mm -hmm. But we have these limiting beliefs. And in fact, we probably shouldn't necessarily model our behavior off of that other person. Absolutely not. Stay in your own lane, know who you are, get to know yourself, your body, your thoughts, and what your healthy dialogue is. But we're not taught this. That's the thing. And so that's the benefit of having a coach and talking out loud in a safe, non-judgmental space where someone can hold that space for you to even speak it out loud and then reflect it back to you. So you even hear what you're saying. Yeah, I, I agree. Sometimes sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes you repeat back some of these, some of the not so healthy dialogue and it just doesn't sound right coming out. Like when you hear it, when you hear someone else saying the same thing you are and it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right, but it's something you said. <laughs> right? That's, and that just happened with a client today. Like They mentioned that they've spoken for hours on the phone with other people and in just 30 minutes, just by me helping that person hear what they said, it shifted It shifted them in, in, in one session. Mm -hmm. And I think those mindset shifts are are significant. They happen fast and they can yield some very dramatic results in such a short period of time especially when you show up for yourself and you come into it wanting to heal and wanting progress, then together we can co-create some amazing things when you're ready, willing, and able. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's key. You got to come in ready. <laughs> yes, you do have to come in. It doesn't mean don't come in wounded. We all, we understand that piece, but are you willing to let go of that wound so you can be better and move forward? Yeah. Going in depth on topics such as these allow us to achieve uncommon healing. We already do a good job at solving gut microbiome dysfunction at the root of inflammation, and we make strides in trying to unwind the perspectives and behaviors that create illness in the first place. And that's how we achieve a lasting recovery. Now remember, we've got 13 other videos on similar topics, so if you found this conversation useful, be sure to check out the other videos. Also share these videos with someone you know who's struggling with a health condition and doesn't know where to start. Sometimes just starting the discussion with them can help them change their perspective on illness. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.